Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday. Here in the Atlantic, things are still fairly quiet over here, not too active. We do have an area of convection in the western Gulf of Mexico here from partly due to an old vorticity maximum from Beatriz, which developed over Mexico underneath a mesoscale convective complex and came out over the water over here, being enhanced by a frontal boundary in the tail end of an upper trough here, an area of strong out convection that probably won't be able to do much over the Gulf um, and will be just bringing some rain rain to the Gulf Coast area, which is much needed and welcomed by them. Not too much of a concern here for tropical development. We have a tropical wave in the Central Caribbean and another tropical wave west of the Cape Verde Islands. This one over the Central Caribbean is the one we're going to be watching over the next few days as it comes westward and starts interacting with this monsoon low over here near north of Panama. And this is the system that the models are starting to develop. And you can see that this pattern I've been outlining for quite a while now is starting to take place. We don't have very much competition going on in the eastern Pacific right now. And you can see the area of heat is starting to consolidate in this area as the MJO is favorable over this area of the world. The heat is starting to build right in here. And this tropical wave is going to be taking advantage of that as it comes west-northwest towards Central America here over the next few days. And we'll have to see what can come out of this. Uh, the Canadian develops a storm out of this, brings it across, starts bombing it out as it likes to do, feeding back into a hurricane here in the western gulf by day six, and the GFS by day eight has the same kind of look but weaker, um, just southeast of the Rio Grande River on day eight. And um, I want to show you a couple of things today. We're not going to talk a too much about whether this is actually going to develop. For one thing, every model I can find except the UK Met does develop this. Uh, that's not a guarantee that it will. The model support is getting better each day, but we've, saw it, we've seen it drop at a wave before this, so that's not guaranteed that it will develop. The pattern is there to favor it, so it may develop. We'll have to watch to see when the wave actually starts interacting with the trough to see whether it actually starts to get going. But until then, there's not much more I can outline for you guys about whether this is actually going to develop. We'll just have to wait and see and see when the process of development gets started. But for now, we're going to assume it does develop. And I want to talk a little bit about the long range track track possibilities for this system should it develop. And uh, I want to show the steering pattern. It's very analogous to Hurricane Alex of last year, which also developed in late June. In fact, tomorrow is the day that Alex developed last year and uh, ended up making landfall in Mexico on the last day of June or the first day of July. I forget which. This is June 29th, 2010. This is where Hurricane Alex was, had just come off of the Yucatan and was in here in the Bay of Campeche trying to reorganize. And this was the upper level setup at that time. You had a big ridge over the Rockies over here and a trough south of Hudson Bay with a weakness across the eastern United States. And um, you can see on the GFS, day six, here's what we have. We have the low sitting over here at 500 millibars in a similar location to where Alex was. And we have the ridge to the northwest of the storm and a weakness over the eastern United States. Not as amplified of a pattern quite as with Alex, but the same kind of organization of the upper level long waves is there. And uh, of course, when Alex was in here, what he did as this weakness was strong enough to bring him northward for a time. and um, then eventually, this ridge started moving over to the east over here, over the plains. This weakness started migrating east, and this ridge strengthened a little bit more in here. And so it came north and started bending towards the west, eventually west-southwest and into Mexico over here as this ridge came directly north of the storm and directed the steering flow westward. If we go out to from day 6 to day 7 on the GFS, you can see that the ridge starts moving a little bit farther east here, more directly in line with where the storm is over here, which is trying to come a little bit farther north. The only thing about the GFS here is that this weakness is moving off, and this ridge is coming directly over the system. So from this point, if I were to go another 24-hour step ahead in time right now, I would expect this system to turn in like this near Tampico. I would expect it to turn in like that. Instead, the GFS brings it all the way up to the Rio Grande River near Brownsville. But look where the ridge is. It's still directly n north of the storm. So I, I think this is a fishy solution from the GFS based on its own upper-level pattern to have this ridge sitting right here implies that this is going to completely uh, turn in and miss Texas, but the GFS 
is doing this. Now it's interesting to note that last year when Alex was down here, the GFS was bringing it up into Texas, Louisiana, while the ECMWF was bringing it into Mexico perfectly the way it actually did, but the GFS was too far north. It'll be interesting to see if that error spills into this year. And if we do get something in here where the GFS again is too far north with this. So it'll be interesting to see that. One thing about um, some of these models is it's going to all come down to the exact positioning of the ridge over here and the strength of the weakness. This is the Canadian by day six. You can see the storm is in here. It's moving northwest at this time. Look at where the ridge is. It is pretty far southwest here. If the ridge is actually this far southwest, this weakness could be strong enough that the storm doesn't really know what to do here and kind of stalls for a bit because it's kind of hard to turn even westward into a ridge that's really strong right over northern Mexico over here. It's kind of hard. It would have to turn very far southwest to move with the steering flow. At the same time, there's a slight alleyway here, though it's still a fairly strong ridge, so it may sit in here if the ridge is actually this far south. But if it's a progressive pattern, like it probably will be, the ridge will be farther up here, and this will have to turn in to the west. So you can see the similarities with the pattern for Alex here with the big ridge over the Rockies and the western plains, and then the weakness to the northeast of the storm are probably going to be the main players. And again, it'll come down to timing. We don't have a system developed yet, so we can't know the exact timing. What's probably going to happen is this trough that comes down there's going to be a trough before this one uh, that will be over the eastern United States during day three or so that's going to be providing a weakness here that may allow this storm to come north of Honduras. Let me pull up the satellite again. As this wave comes across, I have a feeling it'll be able to get just north of Honduras and be able to be over the water here as the slight weakness over the eastern seaboard helps it to lift slightly north. The key will be where it crosses the Yucatan. If it comes out near where Alex did last year, it's going to be a fairly far west track probably coming in near Tampico over here and uh, or even farther south like the European shows and not going to have a whole lot of time over water but if it lifts northwest while over the Yucatan it comes out over here it'll have a longer time over water perhaps coming in farther north and more time to develop into a more formidable storm and you can see as the European shows over here very far south brings it in just straight across here. No weakness up here whatsoever. The ridge is strong and the European as it likes to usually do is the farthest south of the solutions here. This would not allow very much development in the Bay of Campeche at all. Um, so there are a couple of possibilities here but looking at the timing and the upper level features it doesn't look like this is going to be curving up. Um, Texas still should watch this though I have a feeling that the Mexican coastline is going to be at most risk from this. Mexico is going to be affected no matter what from this if it does develop because it'll be crossing the Yucatan. But this is again very analogous to Alex from 2010. And I have a feeling that if this does develop, it'll be more inclined to move in somewhere near Tampico. Of course, we can't nail down any landfall locations this far out, but Mexico will be the number one target for this based on the upper level pattern, though Texas should keep an eye out as well. And hopefully it brings some rainfall to folks that need it as a storm that's not too awfully strong. And we'll see if it develops here over the next few days. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.